Okay, here's a short little video on the uh, dead end filtration experiment. Um, I'm just going to show you how to make a nice graph with, with your data because it's okay, it's easy enough to make a graph, but making a nice one is, is um, a little bit trickier. And, you know, this is not just me being pedantic. I think presentation of, of your results is always really important. It, certainly if somebody picks up a document that you've written, their first impression is often formed by just general quality of layout and, and what have you. So really it's it's important to make your graphs, your tables, your general presentation look as, as good as possible. So I'll just take you through what I would do with the dead end filtration data. So your your typical data set is a, a plot of volume versus time or a set of volume data versus time. So your V there are there your that's your filtrate volume uh, as a function of time. So that's the data you collect with the little filtration cell. And we know that the, the core of this experiment is to do what's called the T over V versus V plot. So we're going to have to, to work out time over volume at various times and then plot time over volume versus volume. And we, one of the things we have to be careful about are, are units and you know our data here is in mils and mils are not an SI unit. We want everything to be in meters cubed. So the first thing we want to do is convert the volume there into meters cubed. Now we could do this at the end, but it's actually simpler just to do it at the very beginning. So I'll just stick here V, uh, sorry, V is up here. V is in meters cubed. And to convert from mils into meters cubed, I multiply by one by 10 to the minus six. So you're gonna have a lot fewer meters cubed, obviously, than you do of mils. So there's there's a thousand mils in a liter and a thousand liters in in a meters cube. So there's ten to the six mils in a uh, in a meter cubed. So that's our volume. Uh, T over V versus V. So now I want to work out T over V versus V. So T over V. So I just write that as T over V in seconds per meters cubed. So that's equal to um, T slash, make sure we pick the right V, the one with the meters cubed. And don't worry about that, that always happens because you have a zero volume at the start. So there we have our data. And these, this is the plot we're asked to make in this lab, the T over V versus V. Okay, so I can just plow on then, and just make it look nice. I can plow on and just do the plot and insert chart, doink, there we go. And we know that part of this, the exercise in this lab is to find the slope. So I'll just add a trend line. And it's gonna be a, log, a linear trend line. I'll put the equation on the chart and I get that, okay. And you know, from my little movie about report writing, first thing I always do is just get rid of this because the fixation on my part. But the first thing I want to draw your attention to is this here. See the way the regression has thrown this up and it's got one by 10 to the 11. For some reason, Excel defaults to just to no decimal places and that's not good enough for the calculations you're going to do. So I'm gonna right click on this. Oh, I use a mouse, I recommend you use a mouse. And I'm gonna format the trend line label and the number I'm going to change it to scientific and it's with two decimal places. And you can see now that that 1, point, 1 by 10 to 11 is actually 1.18 by 10 to the 11. And that might make all the difference in making your final data uh, look nice. So that from that slope then, uh, using the equations in the manual, you can work out this alpha parameter, which is the specific Higgs persistence, which is a, a parameter that kind of quantifies how hard or how, how easy it is to, to filter. A given suspension. Okay, so so we're, th the next step then will be to label these axes. So you know, put on your you know, your titles for your axes. So I'd you know format the axes, all that kind of stuff. But if you look at this graph, the the labeling of the axes is a bit clumsy. You know, there's there's a lot of digits knocking around there. One thing we could do is change this to scientific notation. So if I go to 
right click and then go down to to number again um sorry my so scientific i could change it to scientific notation it looks marginally different then i could fiddle with the number of decimal places i don't need all those decimal places really um but that's one thing i could do then i could do something similar for this axis but but often a nice way to to get around the fact that you have very big numbers are very small numbers is to factor out something a, a big factor out of your your data I'll, I'll show you what i mean now so just delete this uh, first of all i'm going to put this into scientific notation so format the cells uh, scientific Okay, so that's that's the data I want to plot, uh, and I'm going to create a new axis over here, muted, and t over v. And what I'm going to do, I notice that these are all something by ten to the minus five, so I'm going to multiply all of these by ten to the five. Okay, and I notice that these are all by 10 to 6, so I'm going to multiply these by 10 to the minus 6. And just to neaten this up, I get rid of a lot of those decimal places. Okay. And now you can see I've loads of nice neat numbers. I don't have all of these uh, exponentials and stuff. So we're going to plot t over v versus v. So, off that there. so there's my plot. Um, okay. Now, if I look at this axis, the form of the axis. Um, uh, how did you do it? Is it tight like that? So format the axis. I forgot how to do this. Bloody Excel changes all the time, so I want to. Or a plot area, but I want to get titles on these axes. How the hell do I do that again? Maybe I just, oh yeah, axis titles, yeah. Just so many versions of Excel, I forget which one I need. So I want to put axis titles on, okay. So this is the axis title for, for the, the, the uh, Y axis, which is T over V. So I'm going to have T over V, and it's seconds per meters cubed, and what I want to do is tell the, the person looking at this graph what these numbers on the y-axis are. So that 8 there, the 8.00, .00, that's really 8 by 10 to the 6, so I should have by 10. We'll see what I have there. It's t over v seconds per meters cubed multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. So that's telling the reader that this value here is actually 6 by 10 to the 6. So what I've done is I factored out this 10 to the 6 here to make these numbers look a lot smaller. But I have to indicate that I've done that on, on my axis title. Um, so it's got the units and then I have to tell the, the reader, if you like, that these should be multiplied by 10 to the power of 6 to get the actual values. And it's the same with this. The V here is going to be meters cubed 
by 10 to the minus 5. So again, we're, we're, what we're doing is we're telling the reader that those numbers, um, sorry, I just should have here V, so it's volume meters cubed by 10 to the minus 5. So I'm telling, even though these don't have the 10 to the minus 5 in it, the original data has a 10 to the minus 5. So um, I have to indicate that to the reader. So by, by just doing, being willing to change the axis title a little bit, I've made my graph look a lot neater in terms of the, the labels on it. And then I can do my regression. And again, put the equation on it. And we can see that now that we're dealing with small numbers, we get good precision on the on the trend line, actually. Um, so, but you should always be wary of this trend line thing that you might have to to get more precision or more decimal places in it. So that's just one way of 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 making your graph ultimately look a little bit more professional. So you don't have these big gigantic numbers with six, seven digits. You have nice, neat. Um, labels and it's all clear clear here on uh, on how you've labeled so you're telling the reader um, I have an extra bracket there but we don't need but uh, so seconds per meter cubed yeah I should have got rid of that bracket by 10 to the minus 6 sometimes you see I don't even hesitate to say this but sometimes you you would see things like um, volume meters cubed bracket and then multiplied by 10 to the 5 which is kind of saying that the numbers on the axis have been multiplied by 10 to the 5 but that's confusing I think it's better to have in brackets the, the fact that there is a factor to be combined with the number on the axis um, but all in all I hope you agree that's a nicer way of, of doing the plot than than just having a big load of seven digit numbers okay so hopefully that helps